Let me demonstrate to you how you can install a Zabbax on your Ubuntu machine like this here. You see, I've got a working system here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a brand new session here. I've got a VM running here on the side and I'm gonna SSH into that machine there. Uh, so username 8.4.175 so and the password to SSH into that Ubuntu machine here. So I'm on this uh, Ubuntu machine. It's gonna be, um, let me log in as sudo.su so that I can run all the uh, command that I need in here. So this is uh, LSP, it's gonna be on Ubuntu 22.04 here under the code name Jammy here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to install a Docker. If you have already installed Docker, you can skip these steps. So the as usual, I'll do app update. After that, once that's done, I'm gonna have to install a few prerequisites using this command here. By the way, I'll leave the command on the comment section of this video, please check it out. You can just copy paste in it. Yes. So once that's done, I'm gonna clear this guy here and I'm gonna add the GPG key for the official Docker repository into your system here, like with this command here. And after that, I'm gonna uh, add the Docker repository to our APT source here like this. Again, all the commands will be on the comment section below here. Let me clear up the screen here. Once that's done, I'm gonna hit the update button here like this, which is gonna upgrade all your packages. And after that, I'm gonna make sure that uh, um, before I install the Docker, I have all the Ubuntu default repositories set up here using this command here. So at this point, I'm ready to install my Docker. So I'm gonna install my Docker using this command here. Yes. Okay, it looks like the installation is complete. There's two ways to check. Either you type the word, simply type the word Docker like this, you should get something like this. If the Docker is installed, alternatively, you can run a systemctl command like this and hit enter. You should see that your Docker is active and running. Press control C to exit out of the control loop here. So that concludes your Docker setup and Docker installation. Next, we'll go ahead and create a network for our Zabbax. Let me show you what I have in terms of my uh, network so far. I'm gonna IP address and uh, grab only the IP addresses. This is a set of networks that I have so far with the associate IP address here. So I'm gonna create a Docker network using this command here like this. So that's my subnet range. So I'm gonna create a, I'm creating a network here uh, with this subnet here. And the range is all the way up to that, right? So, and this is the name of the network and this is what I'll be using extensively on my uh, Zabbak installation. Hit enter. And now if you look at your IP address and grab, you can see that you do have one more extra network in here. Another way to look at it would be you go Docker network and do LS. You can see that you do have a Zabbak network here. So that is uh, setting up your uh, Zabbax network here. So next thing you have to do is to install uh, MySQL uh, server here uh, in a container using this command here. Again, the command will be on the uh, comment section in the description. Just copy paste and you'll be good that way. Uh, have a quick look at this one here. This is the name of the container that I'm giving. Uh, basically, I'm running the con uh, container right off the get-go. This is for TTE. Uh, TTY, I'm sorry, and then this is for the uh, uh, this is to create an environment variable, and this is what Zabbak needs, right? So I'm basically assigning uh, Zabbak database name as that. Again, this will be used throughout the uh, installation of Zabbak here. I'm assigning a username as that, and this is my password for my my SQL server, and this is a root password. It can be whatever you want it yours to be, and you see this network is what I'm associating, which I recently created uh, on the Docker network here. And this is restart if it stops. And this is the uh, Docker image that I'm downloading from Docker Hub. And the rest are all associated with basic MySQL setup. So I'm not gonna go ahead and explain that. It's, that's a pretty much, uh, there's a lot of uh, document explaining the details about it. So the things that you can change here would be uh, this one here, the database name, your username, of course, and the password, the two password, root and the user password. And if you want to change this name, make sure you keep this name consistent because this will be used throughout your installation. Once that's done, you click enter here and you'll start installing MySQL container. 
as a quick checkpoint, you can do Docker container and do ls. You should see uh, one container image running in here. And just as a checkpoint, you can do image ls as well. You should see one image here because that's what you downloaded using this command here. And this name here, MySQL server, is on your is on your server of your container name right about here. All right, so you have one container. The second container is optional is running Java Gateway for Zabbix using this command here. The whole idea of this is that let's say if you have to monitor a Java app, you do need to install this. If you're not going to have Java application to be monitored using Zabbix, you don't have to install this. So basically I'm giving the container name as that and I'm associating this container with the Zabbix network. Again, restart if it stops. And this is where I'm pulling from, from the Docker Hub. And you'll, this will be uh, part of the image name here. So if you hit enter here, you can see that that is going to create a container for my uh, Zabbix Java Gateway. Okay, just as a checkpoint, like before, we're going to do a container uh, list. And you should see two container now. The first one was a SQL Server container. Second was is the gateway here. And we'll do the image as well. You should see two images here, one for the SQL Server they are run for the gateway. Again, gateway is totally optional. The third container that we will be installing is your actual Zabbix container itself using this command here. So basically what you're doing is that you're creating a container name just like that. I kept it as default. And then this is TTY so that you can actually uh, log into it. And then this is the network I'm associating the Zabbix to. And then this is the database host name, which is the container name of your SQL Server database that you install, the very first container that you install. And the rest of them are pretty much the same as your MySQL uh, container itself, username, password, and the database name itself. And also this one here, I'm sorry, there's one more parameter here. And this one here, you're associating your Java Gateway to your Zabbix here. So like I say, if you don't have the Java Gateway, you don't have to put this environment variable right here. And then the rest one here, the link, you're linking to your SQL server. And then I also link it to my gateway. And this is the port number for my Zabbix that you have to make it available. If you're using things like uh, Rancher, make sure that you open this port number here for yourself. Restart unless stopped. You will restart by yourself when you reboot. And this is a Docker image that I'm using today. I'm going to hit enter here. It's going to create a container for my Zabbix server. And like before, I'm going to dock a container list again. As you can see, you should have uh, three different containers here. The first one is container number one, which is your SQL Server database, Java Gateway, which is optional, and this is your actual Zab Zabbix server itself. You do need this. So once you install the Zabbix, you know, Zabbix takes a bit of time to install stuff and create database. So you can check the status of a Zabbix server by using this command here. If you do see something like this come up in here, which means your Zabbix configuration is completed. In Zabbix platform, I always like to have a good user interface. That's why I install a web server so that I can actually configure my Zabbix. I'm going to use Apache for this demonstration here using this command here. The Apache is going to run on a separate container as well. This is the name I'm giving my container for the Apache. And then this is a TTY enabling environment variable. I'm basically associating my uh, Zabbix server host to the Apache server using this command here. And the environment variable for the rest of them are for my SQL Server, which I've explained uh, early on. And this one here, linking the SQL Server here and the agent as well. And I'm associating the uh, Apache web server with uh, the Zabbix network itself. So it runs on that network here. And I have to open up port 8080 as well. Again, restart unless stop. And then this is the Docker Hub image that I'm using. Once that's done, I'm going to hit enter here. As always, gonna have to look at the container here so that you can check and see, make sure you have the same set of container that I do. And also the port number, make sure, keep an eye on the port number here. Uh, so basically MySQL server running on this port number. That's your gateway, Java gateway running on this. 
Zabex SQL Server running on this port number here, which means everything on localhost itself. And then after that here, uh, my web server running on this here. So a lot of people ask me, do I have to install Zabex Server and Zabex Apache? Yeah, you do actually, because this one's only installing your Zabex Server, nothing else. Although it's written here, SQL Server, it's not, it's, it's, it's for SQL Server because they do, they do have Postgres and all that for Zabex, which I'll show you here shortly here. So, and this one is purely for your um, Apache Web Server. They do have Nginx as well, if you need it to be. So I'll, I'll show that to you shortly here. So once that's done, let's look at the Docker image as well. You should have four images now. One for SQL Server, Gateway, the actual Zabex server itself, and your web server interface here. So once that's done, uh, you're gonna do IP ADDR, and let's look at our IP address, um, INET. And basically what I'm trying to do is, I'm gonna use this IP address, the main outfacing IP address, to open a browser and then basically navigate there. So I'm gonna open the browser. The previous one was 140.74. This is my new IP address. I hit enter. You should be uh, interfacing with this kind of user login screen here. Over here, the uh, username is admin, admin with a capital A. Make sure it's capital A. And the password is Z-A-B-B-I-X. Zabex is the password, everything in lowercase. That's the default password. For some instance, for some reason, if you do a lowercase a and you enter the proper Zabex password, if you hit sign in, it does tell you that, you know, they can't find it, right? So basically it's, it's capital A, D, I, M, admin, and then the password, everything in lowercase, Z, A, B, B, I, X, and sign in. You should come to this screen here. And if your Zabex server is running and it's all good, you should see that uh, all these uh, features should be coming in like that. For some reason, if you do not see all those details here, let me show you what it looks like. Container. And I'm gonna stop my Zabex server here for a bit. I'm gonna say stop. And my Zabex server is this guy here, this ID here. And if I hit stop, my Zabex server right now is stopped and there's no Zabex server and I hit refresh here to make it go faster or if you refresh by itself, you do see that it takes a bit to come back and you will only see one line at the top indicating the Zabex server is not available. The rest of them are like null, right? So this means that your Zabex server is not running. If you do see this, make sure you debug all your Zabex server and whatnot, check your firewall and all that stuff. I'm gonna bring the Zabex server back again. So you can do Docker, container, if you forget the ID, you can do minus A to show all the stop container and the running container. Let me show you. So you can see that this is the one that you need to run. So basically you say docker container restart the container ID. And then once the container is started, this again, and you can see that your uh, Zabex server is running here. And this is what the healthy Zabbix server looks like. One more thing I want to show you on the installation part is this. Let's say, for example, if you need to monitor another server or device out there, uh, so you're going to have to install or run this command. So basically, you're installing an agent that your Zabbix server can talk to. But I'm running a server on this machine here, so I don't really have to install this particular command here. Finally, I want to show you something here on the Zabbix. If you Google it, and then you go on the uh, download and installation of the Zabbix here. Uh, so Zabbix can be installed in multitude of ways. This package is basically installing based on the bash command. You can follow the bash commands in here. Uh, you can also install Zabbix in, uh, as a cloud, as a cloud service. The one that I demonstrated today will be the container itself. If you look through here, there's different ways of doing it. There's like, uh, you can use MySQL Server database, Postgres, SQLite, you know, there's other different types of database that you can use. Also, in terms of front end, you can actually use either Apache or Nginx if needed to be. So when you click on this one here, it will bring you to a Docker Hub page and there's a couple of commands that you can actually run to set that up. So I just consolidated all the commands in my video so that's easy for you to follow. 
I hope you like this tutorial. If you do, please like and subscribe. Other than that, you have a good day. Bye now.